This is a review from class, Chapter 13, Genetics and Genomics, from the Lewis textbook. According to the World Health Organization, genetics is the study of hereditary. Genomics would be the study of genes and their function. So if you're looking at the main difference between the genomics and genetics, is that genetics examines the functioning and composition of a single gene, whereas genomics addresses all genes and how they're related in order to try to identify their combined influence on growth and development of an organism. Genes are arranged in a linear formation along a chromosome. And so each gene has a specific location on this chromosome, as you can tell by this picture, that's termed a locus. Homologous chromosomes are pairs, and they have corresponding DNA sequence. One comes from the mama, and the other one comes from the papa. An allele is one or two or more alternative forms of a gene that occupy corresponding loci on an homologous chromosome. It makes sense if you're looking at the picture at the same time. Each allele codes for specific inherited characteristics. So when two gene pairs are different alleles, the allele that is fully expressed is the dominant allele. The allele that does not express itself in the presence of a dominant allele is a recessive allele. So a phenotype is physical traits expressed by an individual, and a genotype is actually the genetic makeup of a person. Now there are 23 chromosomes. 22 of the 23 are homologous, which means that they are termed autosomes because they're the same in both males and females. The sex chromosome makes up the 23rd pair. So then a female would have two X chromosomes and a male would have an X and a Y. Genes are made up of a nucleic acid called deoxyribonucleic acid, DNA. And DNA stores genetic information and converts the instructions for synthesizing these specific proteins that are needed to maintain life and dictate the rate at which these proteins are made. Every somatic cell in a person's body has the same DNA. The information in the DNA is stored as a code made up of four nitrogenous bases, the adenine, the guanine, the cytosine, and the thymine. The DNA bases will pair up with each other. Adenine will pair up with thymine, and cytosine will pair up with guanine, and they form units called base pairs. And each base is attached to a sugar molecule and a phosphate molecule. So together, a base, a sugar, and a phosphate are called a nucleotide. And nucleotides are arranged in two long strands that form the spiral called a double helix. The making of proteins occurs in two steps, transcription and translation. A product of transcription is mRNA. It occurs in the nucleus and requires RNA polymerase. The products of translation are polypeptide chains that eventually become proteins and the translation occurs in the ribosomes. Mitosis. This is a type of cell division that results in the formation of a genetically identical daughter cell. Before cell division, the chromosomes duplicate, and each new cell, the daughter cell, receives an extra replica of the chromosomes from the original cell, which is called the parent cell. Meiosis. Meiotic cell division takes place in two steps, meiosis one and meiosis two. Meiosis is called reduction division because the number of chromosomes are reduced by half. Meiosis occurs only in sexual reproductive cells. So oocytes and sperm contain only a single copy of each chromosome, whereas all other body cells contain duplicates of each chromosome. Genetic mutation. Many gene polymorphisms account for slight variations among people such as hair and eye color. Some result in disease or an increased risk for disease and are referred to as mutations. A genetic mutation is like a spelling error in a gene sequence, and this ranges in size from a single DNA base building block to a large segment of a chromosome. Somatic mutations can occur if a mistake is made as DNA replicates during cell division, or environmental factors alter the DNA during a person's lifetime and are passed on to all cells that develop from that single cell. Aging makes repair of the environmental toxins, the UV radiation, and the chemotherapy drugs less effective because DNA changes accumulate from environmental exposures. Autosomal dominant disorders are caused by mutation of a single gene pair on a chromosome when a dominant allele prevails over the normal allele. An adult form, say, of polycystic kidney disease is an autosomal dominant disorder and frequently it's asymptomatic until the patient's older. Pre-symptomatic testing can actually give a patient information that will be useful in guiding lifestyle and childbearing choices, especially if they have an autosomal dominant risk.
Autosomal recessive disorders are caused by mutations of two gene pairs that's on a chromosome. A person who inherits one copy of the recessive allele does not develop the disease because the normal allele predominates. However, this person is a carrier. Although pre-symptomatic testing for genetic disorders allow patients to take action such as a mastectomy to prevent development of some genetically caused disorders, patients also really do need to consider that test results in their medical record could affect their insurance and employability. Although most breast cancers are not related to the BRCA gene mutation, a patient with that mutation has a markedly increased risk for breast cancer. You can identify and assess inheritance patterns and explain them to a patient and family through the use of family pedigrees and Punnett squares. When one parent has an autosomal recessive disorder and the other parent has no genes that are autosomal recessive, the children will not display characteristics of the disorder. But they could be carriers of the autosomal recessive disorder. As the nurse, you need to maintain the patient's confidentiality and respect the patient's values and beliefs because genetic information can have major health and social implications. Be aware that genetic testing may raise some psychological and emotional issues. Knowledge of a carrier status of a genetic disorder may influence a person's career plans and decisions for marriage and childbearing. An ethical question would include something like, who should know the results of a genetic test? Who should protect the privacy of individuals' test results and prevent individuals from possible discrimination? People are reluctant to share information pertaining to genetic testing need to be reminded about the rights and laws that protect them, including the Genetics Information Non-Discrimination Act. Family pedigrees help visualize a genetic link of some diseases. Genetic disorders can be inherited with a person born with an altered genetic code, or they can be acquired which is a replication error because there's damage to the DNA from toxins. Genetic disorders can be caused by a mutation in a single gene, mutations in multiple genes like a factorial inheritance disorder, which is often related to environmental factors, or damage to the chromosomes, which is changes in the number of structure of the entire chromosome. X-linked recessive disorders are caused by a mutation on an X chromosome and usually affect men because women who carry the mutated gene on an X chromosome have another X chromosome to compensate for the mutation. Women who carry the mutated gene can transmit it to their offspring, and it is possible for women to have an X-linked recessive disorder, and this can occur when an affected male mates with an unaffected female carrier. This points to the importance of testing the carrier status of the female partner of affected males. Examples are color blindness, hemophilia, and male pattern baldness. Because hemophilia is caused by the mutation of the X chromosome, all female children of a man with hemophilia are carriers of the disorder and can transmit the mutated gene to their offspring. Sons of a man with hemophilia will not have the disorder because hemophilia is caused by a single genetic mutation and is not a multifactorial inherited condition. X-linked dominant disorders do exist, but they are very rare. Examples are vitamin D resistant rickets and fragile X syndrome. Multifactorial inherited conditions run in families, but do not show the same inherited characteristics as a single gene mutation condition. This would be things like diabetes mellitus, obesity, hypertension, cancer, or coronary artery disease. Chromosome disorders are caused by structural changes within chromosomes or by an excess or deficiency of the genes that are located on the chromosomes. Down syndrome is caused by an extra copy of chromosome 21, called trisomy 21, where there are three copies of this chromosome instead of two. There is no individual abnormal gene on the chromosome. Trisomy 18 is also known as Edwards syndrome. This is a condition which is caused by an error in cell division, known as the meiotic disjunction. When this happens, instead of a normal pair, an extra chromosome 18, a triple, in a developing baby disrupts the normal pattern of development in a very significant way that is life-threatening even before birth. Chronic myelocytic leukemia can be caused by chromosomal translocation, also known as the Philadelphia chromosome, in which portions of the two chromosomes, chromosome 9 and 22, are exchanged. Genetic tests may help with treatment decisions and allow families to avoid having children with devastating diseases or prevent conditions in high-risk people through monitoring or by having prophylactic surgery. Genetic testing of individuals may lead to both ethical and social issues. When test results are placed in the medical records, the results might not be kept private. 
If an individual is tested, it may uncover information that may also affect a family member who is not tested or may have not participated in the decision whether to undergo the testing. And most insurance companies do not cover the cost of genetic testing. The Genetics Information Non-Discrimination Act does protect people from discrimination by employers and healthcare insurance companies. The results of genetic testing, though, is not always straightforward. A positive test could confirm a diagnosis of Huntington's disease or maybe indicate that a person is a carrier of a particular genetic mutation like cystic fibrosis. It could identify an increased risk for developing breast cancer. Maybe it suggests a need for further testing. But a positive test cannot establish absolute risk or predict the exact nature of a condition. A negative test result means that the laboratory did not find an altered form of the gene, the chromosome, or protein that was being reviewed. It can indicate that a person is not affected by a particular disorder, is not a carrier of a specific genetic mutation, and doesn't have an increased risk of developing a certain disease. DNA fingerprinting begins by extracting DNA from the cells in a sample of blood, saliva, semen, or any other fluid or tissue that is collected. Polymerase chain reaction is a quick, easy method to provide unlimited copies of a DNA or RNA sequence using only a small amount of a sample. It has been used effectively in distinguishing criminal charges, guilty or innocent, and paternity testing. Pharmacogenetic and pharmacogenomic studies can potentially lead to drugs that can be tailor-made for individuals and adapted to each person's particular genetic makeup. The cytochrome P450 affects the metabolism of many medications, and they may not work as effectively or could have some unexpected toxic effects. An example is that one study can focus on a particular gene about the effects of the liver to be able to break down certain drugs like Coumadin. Pharmacogenetic and pharmacogenomic studies are a growing field, and it may soon lead to individualized drug therapy for common diseases like heart disease, cancer, asthma, and even depression. The cytochrome P450 gene does not affect risk, though, for breast cancer, cystic fibrosis, or coronary artery disease. Gene therapy is an experimental technique that uses genes to treat or prevent potentially lethal or disabling diseases that are caused by a single gene deficiency. Gene expression can be manipulated to correct the problem in a particular patient, but the correction will not be passed along to an offspring. Although gene therapy is a promising treatment option for a number of diseases, like inherited disorders like some types of cancer, the technique remains risky and is still under study to make sure it will be safe and effective. It's currently only being tested for the treatment of diseases that have no other cures, like neurofibromatosis, which is X-linked dominant. Stem cells are unspecialized cells in the body that have the ability to differentiate into other cells. Stem cells can be divided into two types embryonic and adult. An embryonic stem cell comes from a four to five day old embryo and have the ability to develop into every type of tissue found in an adult human. Adult stem cells are found in small numbers in many organs and tissues in specific areas of the tissue called a stem cell niche. They are more limited in their potential to differentiate an example would be stem cells from the liver may only develop into more liver cells. The stem cells role is to maintain and repair tissues in which they are found and they're subject to much discussion because they may allow for the regeneration of lost tissue and restoration of function in a variety of chronic diseases like Alzheimer's, rheumatoid arthritis, stroke, spinal cord injury, and burns. Fundamental knowledge of genetics and genomics impacts your role as a nurse. By understanding the influence that genetics has on health and illness, you can assist the patient and family in making critical decisions related to genetic issues, like genetic testing. You would need to collaborate with the healthcare team to involve a genetic counselor or specialist, and you should be able to give patients and their families accurate information pertaining to genetics, genetic diseases, genetic risks, and probabilities of genetic disorders. Family history is one of the strongest influences on a person's risk of developing genetic-related disorders like heart disease, stroke, diabetes, or cancer. A useful family history shows three generations of a person's biological relatives, the age of a diagnosis of a disease, and the age and cause of death of deceased family members. A genetic counselor is best qualified to address multiple issues involved in genetic testing for a patient who is considering having children. Although genetic testing does have social implication, a patient is better served by a genetic counselor who has expertise. Knowing the family history can help in the early diagnosis and treatment of a disorder. For example, it's important to monitor cholesterol levels in a person with a family history 
of familial hypercholesterolemia. People cannot change their genes, but they can change unhealthy behaviors like quit smoking, eating better, and they can also get screening tests to detect diseases and disease risk factors like an elevated cholesterol, hypertension, because these are things that can be treated.